Hey, this is John Siskovich with Farm Marketing Solutions, and this video is all about importing your photos from the memory card that you have from your camera or your phone into Lightroom so that you could keep them organized and edit them and use them in your farm marketing, which is kind of the whole reason why you're taking photos, you know, to document your farm and to share that with others so that they can share it with others so that they can share it with others. And hopefully at least some of them become farm members or farm customers or whatever it is. So how to import photos. When you open up Lightroom, it'll bring you to the general kind of screen. You always start out in your library. Sometimes you'll start out where you left off last. Uh, also, uh, when I take the memory card out of my camera and put it into my computer, it'll prompt me. It'll say, do you want to import these photos with Lightroom? I always click yes. So if you're in the library page of your Lightroom, which is kind of the, the main page, you know you're in the library because at the very top, library is highlighted. You'll see on the left here, under all my file folders, is import. And we'll go on, click on that. And that brings you over to the import window. And we'll go from left to right, picking out the source of where these photos are coming from. Uh, and you can see I have my Windows, regular C, you know, C drive, a disk drive, so on and so forth. I have an external hard drive. I got a lot of stuff going on, on this computer. <clears throat> but I also have devices and I shot with a Canon camera. So I'm going to click on that Canon folder. It's already there. Um, I've imported recently. So it shows uh, all my photos and videos that I have on here that are already in Lightroom. So if you, you know, if you're da uploading, ex importing photos, uh, don't worry about, you know, it automatically importing things more than once. It'll find out which ones are not in your library. I just ran outside and took these. It'll find out which ones are not in your library already, and it'll select those for you. Any ones that are already imported, it knows that you imported them, so they'll show up gray. And it says on the right here, don't import suspected duplicates. You can, I can unclick that and I can, you know, get everything again, but I don't want to, you know, have more than one photo of the same photo in there. That's kind of silly. So I have my photos selected, you know, these three photos that I took, I think there's a B in that one, which is great. This is just a flower outside my door. Uh, the great thing when you're uploading things, you can rename the file. So if you want to rename them to something else, you just click on here and, you know, date and file name, give it a custom name. You have all these options. It's a simple drop down menu. It's all right there in front of you. I'm not going to rename them. Just leave them, um, normal. Uh, if you know that you all want to, you know, want to develop them all the same way you want them all the same look, you can choose your different filters here. Uh, I never do that. I like to do that on a photo by photo basis. Keywords is a good one. So if I went out and took a whole bunch of pictures of flowers or took a whole bunch of chicken pictures of chickens, I could put flowers in keywords and that tags the photo with that keyword flowers. So if I have 20,000 photographs, which we found out in one of my other videos, I actually have 20,000 photographs in my library and I want to search for flowers really quick and I don't have a folder for it yet. As I'm importing, if I tag all those photos with the word flowers, I'll be able to search that and find it super, super easy. So if, you know, if I open a flower CSA or if I want to do some cut flower sales, which is something I want to do this year, I can find flowers really easy. Uh, same thing with chickens or animals or whatever. Uh, you just, you know, even if you haven't done it, if you already have thousands of photographs, don't worry about tagging all of those photos. Just tag the photos that you're going to do from here on out. Uh, I've, you know, as you get better with photography, you're going to be taking more and more pictures. Uh, just worry about starting where you are now and not going back and tagging everything else. Cause that'll just take forever. Uh, just organize it later. What I definitely do is look here at the destination. Now I want to put it into a subfolder and I organize them by date. So my external hard drive is this iOmega HDD H drive. I put, you know, that drops down all of these. You just click on them and they drop down. Uh, here we go. Drops down and shows you all the available files and folders. I click on my external hard drive, which has all these folders into it. I have a pictures folder. So I just click on that pictures folder and that's what I want them to go into, into a subfolder by date. And then I can choose the date format. You know, you can have it look however looks nice to you. I happen to like this 
certain format. So I've been sticking with that. It's just kind of the default. And that automatically, every time I uh, import my photographs, puts them into a folder by year. Uh, now, you know, I'm on the 2013. I didn't create this folder. The software did for me, which is awesome. And then it'll take that year and break it down into, you know, each day that I've taken photographs. And that's really it. You click import and then you're done. Let's go ahead and click import and show you what happens. It says copy and import photos, import and progress. And your photos show up and it automatically ejects your card. So you can take your card out, put it back in your camera, uh, which sometimes I forget to do, which is really frustrating and go out and take more farm photos. And that'll bring you right to your library and it'll show you the most recent uploads and that'll all show up in that one folder. Now, if I go over to the left here and see I Omega HDDH, that's just my external hard drive. Uh, it'd be the same thing if, you know, I was doing it on my own hard drive, but I just try to keep the laptop a little cleaner and, and more empty. <clears throat> uh, 2013, scroll all the way to the bottom and click that they're in that folder. 514, it's May 14th right now. And there's my, my pictures. If I want to edit them, I just double click on it. And that shows the big picture. I go up to develop and I can do, you know, whatever it is I want to do here and change things around. And that's it. I mean, importing really, really simple. The best thing about this is that once they're imported, uh, if I have them in this folder and I don't want to know, you know, if I can't remember that it's that specific date or if I didn't tag them for any specific keywords, I have a folder here. If you look on the left that says flowers, I can take this folder and just drag it and drop it into flowers. Now, if I click on flowers, you'll see I have all these other flower photos in here that I took. And there's my, my picture. And the great thing about that is, you know, I have limited hard drive space on so my hard drive, my external hard drive, my internal hard drive. I'm not creating a copy of an image. If you were just putting these into folders on your computer and you wanted to create a flowers folder, you'd either have to cut and paste or copy and paste. And you know, that, moves a lot of files around. Uh, you might end up deleting something by accident, or, you know, if you have a duplicate of a high resolution folder or a picture, that's take up a lot of space on your computer In Lightroom. It just creates a shortcut. So there's only one copy of that on your hard drive, but there's a shortcut. I can put that into every single folder I have, you know, if it fit every single category and it would just create a shortcut. So there's only one photo, but that folder links to all these, these photos that are in different folders, you know, all these have a different, um, different, you know, file place, actually, you know, actual physical file place. Um, uh, but it's, you know, there's that shortcut for organizing. So I've done things like, you know, organize my photos for, um, I've had some press recently and I make a file to send to the newspaper, uh, and I can just put it all in one place. That way I put all the same development settings, um, when I export them. Um, to the same place, <clears throat> uh, or I can organize them like you see here to a marketing article, uh, photo book that I was doing. I had some pictures of roadkill, uh, that I won't, that that's a long story. <laughs> uh, and, you know, broke it down by farmer or by what farm I'm working on or different bike trips that I've taken over the years. And it just keeps me super organized. And whenever I need something, and I've done this so much recently, you know, with past things, I know, oh, my, my trip to Philadelphia or my trip to Pete and Jerry's organic eggs. I click on that folder and it's all organized. Uh, I have no idea why that photo is there. Um, it's all organized into these folders for me. Really easy, super great. Uh, and I know all my, my stuff is organized for me, uh, without having to create all these weird folders, uh, all over my computer and then remember where I put what, and it just becomes a mess. Uh, so I really like the, organizational elements of Lightroom three. It's easy to import. Uh, it's easy to organize, easy to tag photos. The, uh, the next thing we're going to want to cover is exporting photos. So if you're editing photos, which I cover in a different video, and once the photo is edited in Lightroom, you need to export it because those edits aren't saved directly to the picture. They're saved within Lightroom. So that preserves the integrity of the initial photo. And you're going to want to export that as a new photo. And there's other things you want to do when you're exporting, like put a watermark on it. So if your followers or fans or, you know, customers pin it to Pinterest, you can, uh, put a little watermark on it 
And, you know, no matter where that photo goes on the internet, because di everything's digital nowadays, they'll be able to trace it back to your farm, which is really, really great. And that's something I do with every single photo I take. And I don't care who, who uses them, wherever they use them, because I know that watermark is always on there. And I'll cover that in the next video. So I hope that helps uh, illustrate some of the power of importing and uh, organizing your photos. I don't know what I would do without it. I'll point it out again. My pictures folder has 20,000 photographs in it and I can pull up photos from my past uh, and more recent times, you know, in an instant and really easy just because I've kept it organized throughout all the years. Um, and the, the editing, which I cover in a different video as well, uh, just makes my photography that much better, brings it to a whole new level. And I don't spend a ton of time on it. I don't spend a ton of effort. And because this program's like 150 bucks, uh, I didn't spend a ton of money to see a huge, huge return. I mean, that return has been in dollars uh, with people signing up to my CSA because they can see through my farm website exactly what I do on my farm and I share that through my photography. Uh, so for more on how to export, how to edit your farm photos and some before and after shots that I, you know, I had people send in photographs and I edited them really quick in Lightroom and you can see the difference. So that's not just my farm photos, it's other people's farm photos as well from all over the Northeast go to farmmarketingsolutions.com forward slash farm dash photos. Thanks for stopping in and I hope this helps.